Well, good afternoon, and thanks for joining us here for the news at noon. Rolly Hoyt alongside Corrales Ortiz. Yes. We are through the cold weather. Let's celebrate. Are right? we through the cold weather? Uh, maybe I'm getting <laughs> ahead of the a game bit, a little bit. Yeah, today's going to be a little bit, just a little bit colder compared to yesterday. Mm. But at least it's a beautiful day, as it, you can see. Bright and sunny. Yeah. Uh, folks are getting back to work, and mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there is warmth on the horizon. There right? absolutely so. is. So some good news there. After seeing some historically cold temperatures over uh, before the holidays, Holiday weekend or slowly warming on up. So here's a look outside right now. Just seeing a few clouds out there. Temperatures are slowly warming up into the 40s this afternoon. Still seeing pockets of 30s across the map there. But I wanted to highlight an interesting little feature. You see the uh, area of white on the ground that's not moving outside of Jonesboro near West Memphis. That's actually the snow that's still on the ground that some parts of North uh, Arkansas picked up over the last few days. We did see some reports of some snow yesterday as well. So it's just uh, interesting interesting little tidbit there, but we'll be warming up to only 40 degrees, so almost 10 degrees uh, cooler compared to yesterday, but a beautiful day. Nonetheless, sunny skies in the forecast, but yeah, so warming trend starts by tomorrow. We also have multiple rain chances later this week. I'll let you know if we can see the rain end just in time for your New Year's Eve parties and what else is coming our way for the upcoming week and your forecast coming up. Well, you mentioned that snow that's on the ground up there in Jonesboro, the weather in other parts of the country, certainly uh, having an effect on our next big story here. It's what everybody's talking about, the holiday travel nightmare, nightmare that's playing out at airports across the land. More than 17,000 flights in the U.S. have been canceled since uh, last Wednesday leaving hundreds of thousands scrambling to make new plans. Southwest Airlines alone canceled more than 10,000 flights. Nancy Chen is trying to sum it all up for us in New York. She's tracking the disruption. I've been here since yesterday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon trying to get out. Southwest Airlines, the nation's fourth largest carrier, said it was dealing with what the company calls continuing challenges as it canceled more than 70% of its flights on Monday alone. So the cancellations just compiled one after another to 100, to 150, to 1,000. Jay McVeigh, a Southwest Airlines representative, says the issue snowballed as the storm moved across the country. Well, we've been chasing our tails trying to catch up. But the Department of Transportation says the cancellations by Southwest are disproportionate and the rate of cancellations unacceptable. Rival carrier American canceled around 30 flights on Sunday and told us in a statement they've been operating normally since Christmas Day. We will do everything that we need to do um, to right the challenges that we've had right now. In Houston, an announcement warned Southwest travelers to expect more cancellations. Our next available seats for rebooking are on the 31st and beyond. And while baggage piled up at airports from coast to coast waiting to be claimed, the lines to rebook flights stretched for hours. We got here at uh, 430 for our 705 flight. We looked it up and oh, it's just been canceled. So now I got to stand that long line. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Southwest CEO says the airline will only be able to run about a third of its normally scheduled flights today and tomorrow, calling this the largest scale event he's ever seen. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. Now, the winter storm is also being blamed for at least 55 deaths across the country. That's along with power outages and water concerns. The worst spot, western New York, where more than two dozen have died, and that's a place known for getting a lot of snow, but there are actually driving bans in place in Buffalo. The power is out. There's a state of emergency. Meanwhile, here in the south, where we didn't get as much snow, certainly, the lingering cold continues to cause disruptions all throughout our region. As an example, here in Arkansas, where the return to work is exposing a lot of water and pipe problems, areas like Mayflower and Hot Springs are asking people to conserve water as crews try to get out and fix leaks and get pressure back to normal. And then this afternoon, the National Guard is being called up to help the Arkansas, an Arkansas city that's without water. Problems started in Wilmer and Drew County on Sunday water leaks from broken pipes causing low pressure. The city's just west of Monticello and they shut off water to let their tank refill but didn't help. The mayor posted on Facebook that the National Guard is delivering a tanker truck for people to fill up water bottles. In the meantime, city officials are handing out cases of water until the system can be fixed. Let's slide a little over toward the bottom corner of the state. Uh, the city of Eudora in Chico County under a boil order there. It also 
smoke started over the weekend with burst pipes from freezing temps. Town officials say that mechanical issues at their water treatment plant may have allowed some contaminated water into the system. The health department is now monitoring water quality. Again, that's Eudora. And as thousands of Arkansas football fans get set, set to head across the river to Memphis for the Liberty Bowl, you're going to be finding their hotel might be without water. The city is under a boil order. Officials say that the Liberty Bowl game is still happening tomorrow, however. Hotels and restaurants are doing what they can to keep their doors open for all the fans. Babaloo's and Lafayette's uh, music room are boiling water around the clock. They say they also had the foresight to buy water bottles ahead of opening. One of the biggest challenges restaurants are dealing with is not being able to prep food for the next day, but the general manager of one of those tapas bar locations says they'll not let it affect them. We're going to stick to our normal schedule. Uh, again, anything that involves water uh, with our prep, it's just the boiled water we use. The Memphis Utility Company said it could be another four or five days before things are back to normal. So be patient and prepared if you are headed to Memphis for tomorrow's game. We'll have you, we'll get you any updates if anything changes. Health experts are predicting the number of cases of COVID-19, the flu and RSV will go on the rise at the end of this week. They'll stay high for the first two weeks of January. A lot of it due to travel and holiday gatherings. And all of these respiratory illnesses are driving up demand for children's medicines. Some pharmacy shelves now empty. To combat part of the problem, the government has released reserves of Tamiflu. And to prevent stockpiling, CVS, Target and Walgreens are now limiting purchases of over-the-counter children's medicine. Health experts say in a pinch, adult meds can sometimes be adapted for pediatric use. For the kids that are able to swallow pills and the dose works out properly, sure, usually once kids get over 110, 120 pounds, that's going to match up with an adult dose. Health experts caution before offering an adult medication, parents should talk to their pediatrician to avoid exceeding the recommended dosage. Other health news, the holidays are a time for added cheer and added stress, and that often comes with increased alcohol consumption. According to UCLA Health, alcohol consumption spikes between Thanksgiving and New Year, and for some people it doubles compared to the rest of the year. And many Americans may fall unknowingly into a category known as gray area of drinking. Meg Oliver has what you need to know about it. When I came up here, I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. I was in the house, it was a long day. It was a long day with just me and the baby. And you felt isolated? I did. Maureen Anderson is a married mother of four. She says that isolation is part of what led her to drink more frequently. It became less of an out of the house, special occasion party thing to more of a, at the end of the day, time to have a glass of wine, shut off my brain, relax. How did you like to drink? You know, when I was making dinner, I'd pour a glass of wine and um, would that lead to another glass of wine? Yeah, it could be a bottle a night. It could be a little more. It could be less. I could take a night off. Anderson didn't consider herself an alcoholic, but a gray area drinker. Dr. Akash Shaw is the chief of addiction medicine at Jersey Shore University Medical Center. The term gray area drinker means someone who is drinking more than they probably like, but not so much that it's causing external consequences yet. Is this just another term for alcoholism? I think the term falls into this gray area because it doesn't yet meet the medical definitions of alcoholism. But I think that risk is there. Drinking nationwide is on the rise. According to the Journal of Addiction Medicine, during the COVID pandemic lockdown, drinking among women increased more than 50 percent. And for women with children under five, it shot up more than 300 percent. This is always a time of year where more clients come in. Nutritionist Jolene Park quit drinking eight years ago. This gray area drinking spectrum, it's real. She gave a TED talk on the subject that's been viewed more than 350,000 times. Now she counsels people like herself to stay away from the bottle by eating healthy foods, exercising, and natural relaxation techniques. How do you know if you're a gray area drinker? Gray area drinkers can and do stop drinking. It's very, very characteristic. They um, stop frequently and say, you know, they have a, a night, they wake up the next morning and say, I can't keep drinking like this. Go get it. Anderson has gone two years without a drink. Come on. 
and is also now a certified recovery coach, helping ready, ready. other women. What do you want people to take away from this? I want women to know that they're not alone, that you know we're expected to drink a lot and, and be okay with it and to deal with it and to, and to feel fine. We really are expected to drink a lot. It's, it's everywhere. Meg Oliver, CBS News. Well, we've talked about recycling your real Christmas tree, but what about all that other holiday stuff that's taking over your house? We're verifying what you can do after the break. And Corrales? You guys are probably wondering, hey, what is? Why is it so cold? Well, I do have some good news. By this time tomorrow, we'll be about 15 to 20 degrees warmer with more warmer temperatures on the way. That's along with some rain in the forecast. I'll be talking more about that with a full check of your forecast coming up.